the most underappreciated skill in tennis is playing defense. And why do I think this? Or why, why do I know this? Well, there's this term called pushing or being a pusher in tennis. And it's derogatory in that, you know, a lot of tennis players, they, they hate pushers. And pushers or pushing in tennis basically means that you're consistent and you're just pushing the ball back into the court, uh, regardless of whatever quality shot it is. Maybe it's a slice shot or just a medium pace shot. It is just pushing the ball back into the court and pretty much making your opponent miss shots, making unforced errors galore. And that is a style of play. And it's a very valid style of play. It's a play that can work very well. And pushing is very much a defensive skill. It's a defensive strategy. And it's hated upon by many, many tennis players. And I don't get why. I don't understand why that is the case. I think, you know, if you look at other sports, uh, basketball, um, baseball, football, um, almost any other sport, defense is celebrated. Defense is something where they, they say defense wins championships. In baseball, they give out Golden Glove awards for um, really great defense. All these things in other sports where, you know, they give these defensive play awards, um, it's celebrated. In tennis, it's not only underappreciated, but it is pretty much ridiculed. And I don't know of any other term in other sports, push, you know, pushing in tennis. It's derogatory. Is there any other derogatory terms in other sports regarding defense? I don't know of much. But in tennis, pushing is is a term where it's it's just bad and but it's just basically a, a style of play a defensive style of play and i believe it should be celebrated it should be definitely appreciated celebrated and in this video we're going to look at all the things that need to be done in order to play well playing defense what are the skills that you need uh, to play a good defense and let's check this point out here I'm the one serving. Andrew is the one returning here. So let's check this out as it plays. I had a forehand. Great chop there by Andrew. Gets back on offense with that volley. But here, Andrew has this... Uh, is on the defensive, right? I put him uh, very much on the defensive and he has this chop, pretty much a chop uh, shot that just kind of floats back into the court, but it goes short and I had to run for it. And Andrew here is playing defense, right? He's, he's playing defense. There's this whole wide open court here now and he has to run. And when he runs, right, he's still on defense. Now he gets a good shot in here and now He's on offense. He's on offense. He has the open court, and he gets that volley for the winner here. And I know this seems like a basic point, a basic play where someone's on defense and then somehow wins the point. A lot of players will give up. A lot of players, and I've seen it, will they go on defense, and they just don't run for the next shot. And in order... To be a good defensive player or just a good tennis player in general you have to be okay playing defense and you may need to play defense for half of the time or maybe in more than half the time in your tennis matches you have to be okay with playing defense and you actually have to have this mentality where you enjoy playing defense so think about Rafael Nadal whenever he's on defense it seems like he enjoys it. He he says he enjoys the suffering and he's running back and forth, side to side, up and down. And he seems like he enjoys that. So whenever you're on defense, you have to enjoy it. You have to find a way to really like it and dig in and hustle and go side to side. You should be okay with that. And you're basically a dog, right? You're a dog chasing balls, fetching balls. You should be okay with that on the tennis court. So if you want to have good defensive skills, that's the first thing you need is to have that mentality 
of really appreciating the defense and really enjoying playing that defense. So I mentioned in the last video that Andrew hit this chop shot back into the court and that got him, uh, you know, still back in play. But to have a little bit higher quality defense or if you want to elevate your defensive skills, you got to get your defensive shots a little bit deeper. And so here, Scott here is about to rip this forehand and notice that I'm already here uh, on defense. He went a little bit behind me and it's going to be a tough shot for me. And I, I went with this squash shot here. And even though you're on defense, right, maybe you're pulled out, um, you know, very, very much to the side. Yes, your intention is to get it in play back into the court. But if you want that higher quality defense, you got to get it back in play deep. And so when I chopped this here, it went back very deep, actually. So it went back right on the baseline here. And now you're in this neutral rally. And so when Scott hits this ball, I, I got a short ball here. Now I'm on offense. And I went with this drop shot here for the winner. So if you want to have good quality defense, not only get it back into the court, maybe get those good slice balls low, right? You're pulled off with a slice forehand or do a slice back and get it low, but also try to get it deep and you can get back into a neutral rally or maybe even on offense. To have good defense, you'll also need to have some good lobs in your arsenal. So here's me about to serve. Andrew's the one about to return here. And Andrew hits this very good backhand return cross court. And now I'm left with uh, a very, very little option, but just to lob it. And to lob, you just really need to have good hands. Um, so when I did this backhanded flick lob, just kind of, I barely hit it, right? I, I barely hit it, just got on my strings and just kind of moved my wrist up just to float it up over Andrew's head here. And you need a lot of lobs uh, when you're on defense, especially against these net approaches here. You just need to have good feel with your hands. And especially in recreationally, uh, when you play recreational players, lobs are very effective because a lot of recreational players, they don't have good overheads or they don't want to hit overheads. So try to practice these lobs, these flick lobs where you just just pretty much move your hand, whether it be a backhand or a forehand, right? You just need to move your hand just a little bit up. It's not much, but it's still very effective. You could still hit this very high lob over someone's head. And you're going to need that on both the forehand and backhand wings. Another good skill to have when playing defense is to have good recovery steps. And I've shown this uh, video clip before. Check out my video, Defensive Footwork Maneuvers. But I wanted to show this again regarding my forehand here. So when I hit this forehand, I knew immediately that it wasn't a great shot. It was going up the line here. It was okay, but I knew Daniel here can rip something to the open space from his backhand side and I would be in big trouble. So watch what I do immediately after I hit this forehand here. And so when I hit this forehand, just watch my feet. I do one to two recovery steps. So I, I take a step here, then I take another large step in order to do this, what I call this leap step. And so now I'm pretty much in the air here with both my feet to get back into the center and notice Daniel hasn't hit the ball yet. And so once Daniel does hit the ball, I'm ready for that cross court rip there. And I am pretty much in a neutral rally again. So whenever you are uh, hitting a ball that is not so good, you have to recognize that at, at first, recognize that the next shot, you could be in trouble and be prepared for that. Yes, you, you may need some good speed. It always helps to have good speed uh, as a tennis player, but maybe you don't. What you do need is good recovery steps and good recognition skills. So recognize what you've hit and then recover back to the center as quickly as possible so that you're ready for that next incoming shot. 
as I do this video now, now I, I understand why defense is so underappreciated. And it's simply because I think it's due to the last shot. So uh, here's me and Daniel's about to hit this very powerful forehand here. And I try to do this open stance uh, backhand. I'm, I'm really stretched out here. Definitely an emergency swing. And it goes to Daniel here. And Daniel has this opportunity for a volley here. So a volley anywhere in the court, but he hits it to the bottom of the net. And that's what happens usually with good defensive play. The last shot is just a missed shot or a missed opportunity for the other player. And because of that, the good defense is simply overlooked. I could have been on the defensive for the whole point, just having five shots, just getting it back in play. And the person on offense just missed that put away shot. And you we see that as a blunder. But what we really should see is the good defense. Uh, just the good defensive skills of that tennis player. And that's what happens with pushing, right? Pushers, they'll just push it into the court, and pretty much everything for the other player becomes this opportunity, and they miss everything. They miss it wide, they miss it out, and it's just bad. It looks bad, but really, we should be celebrating that pusher. That pusher is just playing good defense, good, smart tactics, and they usually know how to win. So uh, celebrate that defense. Celebrate what's going on with good defensive skills with these players that can really be stretched out and still get it back into the court. That's good tennis. If you enjoyed this video, kindly do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.